Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Light It Up. I am your host, Dr. Ajina Mashira. I'm excited about this episode as I am each and every episode because I always seem to find the most amazing guests to come on to Light It Up. This week, we're going to continue our conversation about self-preservation, self-care, and all of that good stuff because I think We all need to hear that. We all need to do a little bit better in that area, myself included, as I continue to tell you, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself as well. So today's guest is Nicole Muhammad. She is the urban social worker, and she's also an author of two books, um, Soul Talk Volume 3, which is a book about self-preservation for servant leaders, and also her brand new book, Green Panties, Ulcers, and Corns. What an interesting title. So we're <laughs> going to learn a lot about that. Welcome to Light It Up, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Let's go ahead and light it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This has been a long time coming. Um, what I can share with folks is that your son was actually on Light It Up during season one. Uh, when I did the series on Black male educators. So, of course, he got it honestly from his mom. (laughs) We try, we try, we try. (laughs) So why don't you tell everyone um, just a little bit about you, um, uh, your background. You've been working in the area of social work and education for some years, but just give us a little bit about who Nicole Muhammad is. All right, so Nicole Muhammad is uh, a married mother of two adult children, one who is 23, Uh, he is married, lives in Chicago, and then I have a daughter who is 21 and she's in her last semester at Kentucky State University. And um, I've been in the justice and educational system for over 25 years. And that has been in the capacity of um, a juvenile probation officer, a school social worker with Chicago Public Schools, an assistant principal, a principal, and now currently I'm working with um, a program that, uh, Chicago Cred, that does a gun violence reduction, gun violence reduction. And with that, we help to pilot um, women in the program because it was predominantly for young men. And uh, we've grown that from two starting in 2019 to we have right now 20 with the expectation that we'll have up to 30 by the end of 2021. So yeah, uh, I'm a yoga instructor. I am a certified sexologist. Uh, I uh, really do a lot of work around trauma and self-preservation and responsibility. You know, I do some speaking and some professional development and I'm an author. So I think that's it in a nutshell. I'm I'm really multi-passionate. I probably could go on and on, but we're going to cut it there. Um, (laughs) That's just only because I love learning and understanding Mm -hmm. all the facets that come in front of me. So yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember, I don't know how we met. Part of me feels like, because I used to work in juvenile justice. I worked for the Mm -hmm. sheriff's department. I know it dates back 20 plus years. Um, I can't really remember. I feel you. You don't even have to stretch yourself. Okay. <laughs> Cause I so, wanted that's because of my dad, but I feel like we met is. before him. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. We, you know, I had, um, I used to work for Robert Shaw when he was the alderman in the ninth ward. Okay. And so, um, uh, Shaw was on his show several times. And then when I ran for office, um, and was doing some other things. Your, your daddy had me on the show like three times. Yes. Okay. So, and I, I came to Crow a few times just to look at and review some of the things that were there. And so, yes, yeah, so we, yes, we had, okay. we had. Okay, mm-hmm. so it was him. See, I was going to say that we went, we had a class together. It was something with the <laughs> Cook County Sheriff's Department and then my dad, but all right. So, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we do go back uh, 
we go back some years. And then um, I also worked for Chicago Public Schools. So I know that we bumped into each other, uh, you know, several times there. So why don't we talk about how you actually um, got started or developed an interest specifically with dealing with um, trauma-related issues, going into the social work uh, field, which of course is a very important field. Um, we need more social workers because we all know the struggles that we experience, particularly in our community. So what ignited or sparked that passion for you to kind of venture into that arena? So um, I can go back as far as um, elementary school, right? Uh, my mom had me doing community service at an early age. And the things that we did, I really wanted to understand how uh, the individuals that we came across got to that place, right? Um, fast forward in high school, I did some things. And um, then when I went to college, I got my bachelor's in law enforcement administration. Okay. And I went to the county jail to do my internship. And I realized that I didn't want to work with adults. I wanted to get to youth mm -hmm. right before they got there. Like I could be the one that could not have them come here. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I did that. And so I, I went into juvenile. Uh, I was in politics, but then I went into juvenile uh, prob probation. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, just kind of going into the school system, I really wanted to really get deeper. Like they don't even have to try to make it here. Like if we could really help. So I decided to go back to school and I got a master's in social work. Um, and I got that from Chicago State University. And so I just fell all the way in love. I left probation, became a school social worker. And of course, then all the dynamics, you know, really uh, shine on the school level mm -hmm. and um, just have been there and locked in and just decided to just continue with my knowledge and my certifications just to go in deeper and just stay consistently on top of what's happening and what's new. So considering, and I'll just backtrack because my story is kind of similar into how um, I got into juvenile justice because I started out criminal justice major with the hope of going to law school, which I did, I just didn't complete it. But I wanted to um, incorporate and tie in education. So I ended up going um, back to school to get a master's in at leadership and administration. Mm -hmm. But I worked for the in the youth services division of the Cook County Sheriff's Department. And our focus was on preventative measures, alcohol, drugs, substance abuse, trying to prevent youth from you know, going down that road, but also establishing uh, programs where students, uh, children who were caught with underage drinking or drug possession mm -hmm. could enroll in a court ordered program to make sure that that was wiped, wiped from their record. Um, so it's just really interesting how you can enter into a field or a profession. And then I thought, <laughs> I really want to work for CPS because I want to go and change the world, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, wait, what's funny, while I was in CPS, I was like, I really didn't understand what the teachers needed. So I went back and got a master's in educational leadership, mm -hmm. right? Just to really understand that component, which led to me becoming an assistant principal and a principal, mm -hmm. and which helps because of the social work lens. So, mm -hmm. so I dealt with things, in my opinion, uh, through a different lens than maybe some people who don't have that background. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yep. So as, let me just ask you, as, as a mother, an educator, social worker, so mm -hmm. considering everything that we're, the, the current environment that we're in right now, when you talk about what's happening with the pandemic mm -hmm. and how there's such a disparity um, in terms of access to resources, which was already prevalent before the yeah. pandemic, but it just exasperated the issue. Um, and so many of our families are experiencing um, trauma. Mm -hmm. What can, um, I guess, from a professional uh, perspective, what do you think that um, families can do to kind of ease some of the, I don't know how to phrase the question to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, because there are just so many <laughs> yes, different dynamics, right? Um, 
But what do you think, I guess right now, what's the the biggest issue or the impact that you see that this pandemic is going to have or is currently having, particularly on our youth? Well, just like you said, that's a loaded question because there are so many different dynamics. Um, you know, for youth who were already struggling being engaged in the traditional sense, this widened, right, that gap or hole or whatever it was because it's even harder um, in some instances to engage when you're not in a space present face to face. Right. So you have some youth and I'm not certain, nor have I looked. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be there if CPS or any other school district has shown that data. Mm -hmm. Right. Of youth that already were struggling to be engaged, but that why? Well, it's probably apparent that it's bigger. Right. Right. Um, then, of course, you have uh, uh, diverse learners who are struggling um, as well. And I know parents who are at home with diverse learners and they are struggling because they never anticipated being a teacher aide, mm -hmm. a sub, um, a teacher. Right. And they really got a chance to have an upfront view. So on one end, it really enlightened parents who had not been hands-on involved. Um, and it also, for some parents, um, exposed how um, much they much more they needed to be involved right yeah. so it, it's it's it was pros and cons to it but I want to say our children if we did not make a determination somewhere within this uh, pandemic that we cannot rely solely on institutions to educate our children and that we have to find some way shape or fashion I know people who created clubs mm -hmm. like this week you got it this week you got it or every other day just to try to help enhance um, their children's experience. It's just not, it's not a silver bullet because mm -hmm. it's so many different things. There are a lot of children who are suffering mentally, yeah. um, emotionally, um, you know, socially. So um, each home and each child in the home, because I know people who have several children in the home and each one is dealing with it very differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, And I know, and, and I've talked about this before in my own household, um, I, I'm fortunate enough where I feel like my children have been able to adjust, but I've also um, been fortunate enough to be at home with them this entire time because I'm working remotely. However, yeah. I can see just the change in the personality, particularly with my youngest, because she is not um, bashful. She will say this, she does not like this manner of, you know, learning because she's, um, you know, better suited being in person in the classroom. So I try to get her out the house, you know, do things to kind of just keep her, you know, going. But I know that everyone does not have that Absolutely. ability, don't have the resources, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I tell people I recognize the so-called privilege, I guess, that I have being in a position where I can be at home and I don't have to worry about, especially what we just went through with the back and forth with CPS about Absolutely. returning mm -hmm. and not returning. Like I couldn't imagine. Um, and even when our school district came up with a hybrid model plan, the plan was not conducive, even if I were working, to send a child to school for two and a half hours, five yeah. days a week. Who's going to do that when you got to go to work? So, yeah. um, but you're right. It does um, force you to begin to think about educating your children yourself mm -hmm. or relying on one another to develop, um, you know, like you said, cl clubs and pods to support one another. Essentially, it goes back to basics. And, you know, I often think about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in terms of knowing that we are responsible for educating our own. And for so long, we've been so comfortable in relying on institutions to do that. So, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So uh, your, your work in the schools and um, being able to really identify with your teachers when you were serving as an administrator, talk about 
how you were able to connect with your students um, because you, you have the training and experience as a social worker. How do you think having that background and that experience and then the experience of working in juvenile justice help you as a school leader as far as you know, providing opportunities for your students and connecting with them? Ooh, um, so let me say that I, I really strived every day to be a student. Um, there was no way, shape, or fashion I already knew from the beginning that you can't create this cookie cutter structure and think that you are going to penetrate the souls of your students mm -hmm. or your teachers. It takes time and intention and effort to strive to um, personalize your relationship, which really when people know that you see them, you get them, and you may not be able to, obviously you can't get this one with a thousand students or 800 students or 600 students, mm -hmm. right? Um, however, there, there is a way for you to be able to connect so that you can really Inner, try to understand and understand, right? Mm -hmm. What it is that your students need. These are not eight track students. Right. I used to try to press upon my staff that you have to be just as currently relevant as the music, the videos that they're playing. If you are trying to really connect, they are not us. Mm -hmm. Not, not, and that is not a dig because we were not our parents. Right. So if you are going to be in this, state of education you have to strive to be current with everything that they surround themselves with i had to learn about different um, social media platforms and keeping up with the music and trying to you know and it wasn't to be cool with them it was so that i understood what was in my building mm -hmm. and so that i could be multilingual and not passing by them and they're saying something i don't understand the new, <laughs> the new right. Whip, right and then i look up and on the radio uh, second floor midway right yes. <laughs> it's on and popping right? right so you know it's it's very important that if you are going to do people work if you are going to be a servant leader that you really take the time to study and be a student of who you are serving other than that you are the sage on the stage and you are in love this is my opinion mm -hmm. this is my opinion then you are in love with the position and not the mission mm -hmm. that's a very good point so let's take that to your chapter in the Soul Talk Volume 3. What, what's your chapter? What do you focus on? I'm sure you're giving tons of gems for those who are in the, the realm of being a servant leader to help mm -hmm. us improve. So what's your chapter about? Uh, it's really my perspective about what I felt like I sacrificed and committed myself to without um, without taking care of myself and would now and without anchoring and on to what I believe spiritually. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm a handler. Right. I'm going to handle it. Mm -hmm. Right. And for me, if I'm running something or a part of a team that's helping to be responsible for something, I have to get visceral enough to understand what everybody does, because if you're absent, if there's a problem, I need to know how it's supposed to be in look without us falling apart. And I don't believe in toothpick foundations. Mm -hmm. So in everything, being committed, serving long hours, striving to be a daughter, a wife, a parent of two different, you know, children, um, attending their things, trying to be, you know, active with my sort, just being a, a, an administrator, having, and that comes with all types of branches right central office federal state you know just all of those things you're in it and you look up and your health your mental your emotion your spiritual is off yeah. right you're going someplace and you're trying to give your all because you made a commitment to something and then the things that you claim that you love and value the most are usually put on the shelf so you're not in alignment and it's very hard. So my, my part was really about finding a way to balance so that you can come back for the fight every day so that you can be in the marathon every day and that you may have to pause. You will have to delegate. You will have to do these things and that you have to also learn how to be a servant leader or whatever kind of leader you call yourself, whatever that approach or model is, 
without burning yourself at both ends because then what you came to do um either you're going to completely sacrifice yourself and they'll be holding your obituary mm -hmm. or you'll become bitter and resentful just because it's just not really in alignment with who you are at your core so well it that. sounds like you were meant to talk to me today <laughs> 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 because i i struggle with balance and I know so many other women who also struggle with balance. Yes. What advice, what are, first of all, how do you um, stay in alignment and remain balanced? And I know, I know that maybe there are times where you mm -hmm. are off balance. So I don't want to, you know, paint the picture that's that true. Nicole is always balanced and perfectly Ready. aligned because we know that that's not reality. But Number one, what are the ways in which you, you know, try to remain in balance? And then when do you begin? What happens when you begin to notice that you're not mm -hmm. balanced? So I, I think, um, well, let me say this. I do know that I appreciate getting older, right? I hope everyone, as they get older, they get wiser. So you strive to work smarter, not harder. Um, but you know, what I did do was I went back to things that I loved, right? Things that I was able to, um, I'm an only child. So okay. I, I know how to <laughs> talk with myself, be with myself <laughs> and, <laughs> and have this same conversation we have and just all by myself, right? So, do you answer you know, yourself too? No. I do, I do, because <laughs> I do. Girl, what? You, you better stop playing with me. Okay, right. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so but I found places where I can just go mm -hmm. and be by myself and hear myself. Sometimes your house, as much as it is the place where you reside, mm -hmm. it can have a lot of noise, especially if you reside with people. And then just maybe you need to come up out of it because it could also be a place where you don't get fresh new ideas. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So I have places that I go to where I'm able to think and sit and feel safe and just kind of go through some things. I uh, love dancing. When I grew up from three until to probably close to 30 um, and a little bit more, I dance like modern jazz. And so if I'm able to dance um, and create these little routines in my head with an audience, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's going to feel something, yes. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I fell in love with yoga so much that I became a yoga teacher because what it did for my body, how it tapped into my central nervous system. Mm -hmm. and help me go to this place where I'm able to breathe, relax, unwind, take responsibility for where I am because of the things I did to myself, mm -hmm. the things I signed on to when I didn't know no was a, a whole word, a whole yes. sentence, right? Yes. So um, it gave me some introspection that allowed me to really start to make some really smart decisions and then just relinking spiritually you know, about not with rituals or anything, just me, who I am, God's daughter, mm -hmm. that's it, that's all, and anchoring myself on that, and what I say that I believe in, right, because sometimes we can say we believe, but we don't, we really don't do the things that reflect that, so it is hard, it is a balance, because even though I'm an empty, an empty nester, um, you know, there are times just with my personality and what I like to do that I get out of balance. Mm -hmm. And it's because of my level of commitment and then, you know, wanting to follow through with what it is that I said that I was going to do. And I can just get wrapped up in it and not, you know, it's because I really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I can tell it's when I start not eating right, when my clothes don't fit right, when I'm not sleeping. And here's the other way that I know when I'm doing something crazy is my tongue is stuck at the top of my mouth wow right there is a connection between your constant thoughts in your head and almost like a frequency vibration connection that if when, when you relax your tongue mm -hmm. i know some people even like what <laughs> try it like just try it you know one day when you will find that your tongue is up at the top mm -hmm. you, you gone right so I just try to really learn some things. I do um, incense, sage, um, you know, uh, aromatherapy, my diffuser. Uh, so 
I just try to do those things. And then just sometimes it's a girlfriend moment. Yeah. You know, I got to get with my sisters or my friends, my sores, whoever, mm -hmm. to just really, you know, let loose. Mm -hmm. Because you have to become someone to do these positions, right? You can't take mama to your job, right? There's a certain perspective and way that you hold yourself with who you are. That in and of itself is an energy drainer, even though you may love to do it, but you have to become someone. We just did something with some police officers. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is they have to become someone in order to survive that job. That person is in them, mm -hmm. but it is just a part of themselves. And if they don't know how to unhook and unhinge, you get home and your children will quickly tell you, I am not one of your clients. Mm -hmm. We are not doing social work right now. Can you stop asking me questions like I'm on your couch? Oh, you're not teaching me in your class. I'm not one of your students, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and a part of you may be offended, like, what are you talking about? Right. But you just have not, um, they looking for their mama. They looking for their wife. They're looking for, they don't care about none of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So shifting is an energy drainer. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm laughing because, boy, have I heard it from my three. Yes. <laughs> so in this household, and I never thought that I would be this parent who sends the group text and we're in the same house. <laughs> and I'll send a text and they're like, Ma, could you please not send this text like you're sending an email to one of your colleagues at work? Ooh. <laughs> so it's hard for me to shift sometimes. Yes, it is. And I'm like, oh, let me, you know, and, and my son, lately we've been having these, I know what he's, he's trying to do because mm -hmm. he'll do things or he'll come and he'll say things while he's on the phone with his friends. So he'll have his AirPods in and he'll come in my room. Um, so there's this joke in my house. I'm, I'm going to be real transparent. Everybody knows that I'm divorced, but I'm also married to my MacBook. Okay. Which is a bad thing. My MacBook is my husband. My MacBook is in the bed with me, is in the bedroom. It goes everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. So, and I need to change that. But so my son will come into my room while he's on the phone with his friends, but I don't realize it. You know, I see he has the AirPods and he'll do something just to get a response out of me. Mm. And then I can hear the friends just cracking up, laughing. <laughs> And I'm like, why would you do that? He was like, you need to loosen up. Like Ooh. seriously, loosen up. And so this last week, he and I, we've been going to see a chiropractor together. Okay. And so now that's kind of like our thing, our opportunity to just be one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, and I said to him, you know, sometimes I can ask him questions and he'll give me an answer that he knows I'm gonna like, what, you know? And he said, I'm just joking. Like, could you just please stop relax. serious all the time? You need to relax. So I'm getting the messages from my children, which obviously I need to take heed. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be a challenge. So what do you say to those women who constantly walk around? I call it the um, superwoman syndrome. Yes, it is. Yes, because, and, and I've often said, um, there are days I don't want to be strong. I don't want to be the strong black woman. Absolutely. I, you know, I don't want the responsibility, but how do you turn it off? You know what? I'm going to be frank and say that um, COVID came to teach me how to turn it off. Now I know that, 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 you know, that for me was something that happened mm -hmm. um, because everything stopped. Yeah. Right. All the meetings, it, it, even if it was just for a short period of time, for everybody learned how to jump on Zoom and have Clubhouse and just all these different things. Right. Mm -hmm. For a moment, everything stopped. And my husband and I were saying, I was just like, we have been going nonstop, whether we thought we stopped or not, mm -hmm. nonstop for at least 15, 20 years. This is the first time that so many doors have closed and opened and faucets have been turned on. and so forth and so on in my I like my house is probably like what is going on right <laughs> that's just my house yeah. so um so it is some it is a struggle because like I said you have to become someone in order to do the different things that you do there are different expectations mm -hmm. so I just think that you have to pause for a second to just take time out and ask yourself like 
am I willing to be committed to this lifestyle for the next six months, year? If not, how do I want that to look? How can I, right? How can I relax? How can, you know, how can I not be so uptight? You know, how can, because I, I know another part of that, and I'm, I'll say this, I don't know if this is your story, but when you're trying to raise your children, there's so many things you're paying attention to. Like, are they trying to be funny? Are they playing me? Is this really real, the story they're telling me? Right. Should I be listening for something? Will I catch them later on something? Yeah. Am I being too, right? Mm -hmm. It's all these things along with trying to reintroduce yourself constantly to your children and to yourself because I had to reintroduce myself to my children several times. Mm -hmm. like, like, you're not who you were in elementary school. You're not who you were your freshman year. You're not who you were your senior year. Mm -hmm. now I have adult children so now I have to have conversations and not be offended if they say things that they grown right. right and I I call myself doing a good job trying to build a foundation right so it's okay to have this conversation right um so it's hard to turn it off but I think it's worth it to visit what you really want and how you want to serious not say it right but actually try to do it and it's it doesn't happen overnight so I don't there is no magic bullet to that I think it's it's just about I'm striving very hard to be present when I'm with my family now trying to be um present when I'm with my clients mm -hmm. trying to be present when I'm in certain things and learning to turn things off and leave them where that purpose for that particular disposition is now some people may say well you just if you're just yourself all the time but certain things have certain seasonings to them yeah. that you have to bring to the table. So um, it's not easy, but I think you have to really think and try to be intentional about how you want to be in that moment with those people. Mm -hmm. Cause I can say this, I felt bad one day when I realized I came home and I, had, I was so tired and I was giving my job all of these hours to have the audacity to come in my house and tell whether it was my daughter, my son, or my husband, can you just give me a minute so I can just get myself together? Mm -hmm. Right. These are the people that I love that I would die for. Yeah. Right. But I just gave mm -hmm. all these people mm -hmm. my energy. I'm draining. I come home with this much for the people who I would die for and that I love. And I have the audacity to either have a, be too tired, have a, you know, and I get it. I pay the bills. I'm trying to keep a roof over your head, da, 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 but I'm sacrificing our relationship. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing who you want to be with, mm -hmm. you know, who am I to you? You know, so it's, it's a, it's a hard, um, it's a hard place to be. It's not easy, but I did from when I had that conversation with myself, I strived real hard to not, to not do that. Mm -hmm. When you were, um, when you were writing, uh, <laughs> or Soul Talk Volume 3, did you find that process to be therapeutic for you to, you know, to share mm -hmm. your story? I did. Well, let me say this. <clears throat> the, um, the main author, Cheryl Pellot Williamson, right, mm -hmm. we had been in contact years before. And through the years, she has just grown tremendously. And she had these anthologies. And I wanted to write the green panties, ulcers, and corns years before I decided to jump on board with Cheryl. But a part of me with my fears and um, knowing of certain things that I just didn't know mm -hmm. and wanting to be guided by deadlines and a safe boundary, yeah. I decided to join on with the anthology. <clears throat> so in that process, I got a chance to see there were certain things I didn't even need to be fearful of, right? It just was not that. It just, girl, you really could have did this a long time ago, right? Hello. <laughs> right? And then there were things that I found out, oh, okay, I didn't know that, right? So if I would have tried that, I probably would have messed up. Mm -hmm. So it was a safe place for me to start and invest my knowledge and, and everything. And so um, it was a great place to be transparent, to begin to talk about the stepping stone towards uh, what was going to be my own book that came out of uh, a little bit uh, less than a year later. So now... Tell me about green panties, ulcers, <laughs> and corns. How did you come up with the title? What's the book about? So the book is about commitment, sacrifice, and just the responsibility of serving leadership for women. 
um, how we play all of these roles. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine said to me one day, if you're taking care of me and I'm taking care of me, then who's taking care of you, Mm -hmm. right? And that was so real to me and it hit home. And um, so the book is really about the lessons that I learned in leadership and how I have these favorite pair of green panties I've had since my freshman year of college. And they were, have been always been in rotation at least two times a month. And um, I went to go put them on one day and they didn't, in the book it says, they didn't flap down, they rolled down, you know, and I, was, I wasn't even mad about the weight gain. I was depressed yes. about the fact that I couldn't put these panties on, but it was indicative of the fact that I had stopped really taking care of myself. And when you gain weight, right, this isn't about being fat or skinny. Mm-hmm. This is about your body is responding to diet, stressors, whatever, mm-hmm. right? And you have not been paying attention. And it's so many different parts of that that could be a, a sign or a symptom of things that you just are missing because you're just going, right? And then we had a really big incident that occurred at the school that um, was really small compared to the fact that it blew up to an international uh, situation and um, it was misunderstood, misconstrued the whole nine yards, but we were responsible for handling it. Mm -hmm. And just in that whole process and me showing up and showing out, we got this, you know, what are you talking about? Handling it, da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I developed like this ulcer. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was eye opening about how I carried stress because I kept everything here because as a leader, you show up, if you're calm, your people have some money to come to and you're con- in a controlled environment because you created that way. I was the thermostat, not the thermometer, mm-hmm. right? Which are two different things. I control the heat up in here, right? <laughs> so, you know, um, and with that, you know, all of that energy, and I don't know how many people that are listening are gonna be believing in energy, frequency, vibration, and how the body works, but you will harm yourself trying to hold on to everything and containing it right? That's what happened. And then um, the last one is really a vain piece. Like I felt like my feet were the cutest feet in the world. I should have been on somebody's magazine with my feet doing the Vaseline commercials, whatever. And because of all my ripping and running and showing up and having clothes and shoes that lined up together and blah, 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 blah. um, I developed two corns on both feet. (laughs) Both. This is a problem. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So it's something that's got to change. Like, I, if I could exhale, look at my feet. <laughs> now they got corns on them. So anyway, <laughs> so yes, that's how the title came. Very uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but as as you were talking about the different aspects and mm-hmm. uh, related to the title and what you went through. I'm just sitting here thinking like, wow, you know, that, of course, thinking about my own Mm -hmm. experience, but um, how we can internalize and, and really harm, do harm to ourselves and not realize how long we've been harming ourselves. So um and and as you were talking about like the game and the weight game I'm gonna tell you I um and I was just saying to somebody I think that so I do know that seasonal depression is real yeah, it's very real it's for me real. it is mm-hmm. yeah. I in December my children and I we went to Cancun okay because I just needed to get away I could yeah. not take it um, because essentially the last trip that I had been on was um, in early, in late February, right mm-hmm. in the midst of where mm-hmm. the pandemic was getting ready. To, and I was in Atlanta mm-hmm. and I knew something, it was really bad when I couldn't find hand sanitizer. But so <laughs> that was my last trip. And I keep thinking about how great it felt just to be someplace warm. Yes. To hear the sound of the waves, you know, mm-hmm. to see the sunrise every morning. And so fast forward, I got on the scale and I know, we know that the scale is the devil and it is not our friend. <laughs> but I had also, when, when we came back from our trip, I had committed myself to 
every morning, meditating. I started yoga, Mm -hmm. started exercising. And then you also helped because I know you were doing your challenge and Team Muhammad. Yes. (laughs) So I was motivated. Mm -hmm. And something happened. I went away another weekend. I was still here in Illinois. Maybe that was the problem because I was in the backwoods of Mm -hmm. spirit in Illinois and I couldn't work out. I couldn't stream my uh, workouts onto the TV. That was five days of not working out. And I've been in this slump Mm -hmm. and I was just like, I cannot get with the program, you know? And so now that I'm, I'm looking at the scale, I'm, I'm, you know, reflecting on how my sleep pattern has now changed. Mm -hmm. I went to the chiropractor with my son knowing that, okay, I probably need an adjustment. And the chiropractor who had never met me, I felt like she was able to read me like a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was my wake up call. Like I just started thinking about all of these different chain of events. And I'm like, I've got to do something differently because I am not balanced at Mm -hmm. all and I've got to you know regroup and get back on track my fear is those people who don't recognize or when they recognize that they need Mm -hmm. to do something different it's too late Mm -hmm. you know um so just as I was listening to you you know I'm sitting here thinking about okay I really got it you know get it get it together but Mm -hmm. So many of us go through these different um, struggles and challenges, but we don't have an outlet or we don't have a way to regroup. Um, Tell people, where can they get your book? I need an autographed copy of your book, (laughs) ma'am. All right. So if you go to my website, which is Nicole Muhammad, and that's N-E-C-O-L-E-M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D, dot com you will get a signed copy and a surprise with it but it's sold everywhere books are sold so amazon goodreads barnes and noble walmart library anywhere you can find books that's where i am you all go to nicolemohammed.com order the web uh the book there i'm not saying that you shouldn't go anyplace else but support the author directly I always tell people that. And plus, you want the autographed copy and the surprise that you won't get in Walmart or Amazon. You will not. You will not. You will not. You will not. So <laughs> you, do you, from, from writing um, this book, what mm-hmm. else are you doing? Are you, uh, do you do like individual, um, I guess, leadership development or counseling sessions for um, women and not to only, you know, reflect on women. I know. I know what you're saying. I got you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I do. Um, So they can reach out to me again through the website. Um, But, um, you know, I love doing groups, right? Because, I mean, I know individual is fine. And um, I also have a ton of beautiful clinicians that are doing some really good work because different things like it's certain things that I don't focus on right because I know my strengths and I you know I know my weaknesses so according to what it is we may not be a good fit and that's not about you it's really about me right um the other part of it is is that it's it is necessary for us to know that we are not alone it's strange to me how I think it's so important for women to just this is not to expose all of your business, but to communicate because your sister needs you. Like it, it is beautiful to know. That's why I always reach out to older women as well, because I want to know what's coming down the pike. Right. Right. For me as a woman and not that my story is going to absolutely mirror yours, but some things are just a given, mm-hmm. like just how we know our daughters and, you know, and, and sons. Right. And we point of reference is always beautiful right? Lived experiences are better than a book. Right. Um, so, um, you know, or theory, I should say. Um, so I, I really love doing professional development, the coaching, the training. I am starting my own um, life coach training certification uh, program. And a part of that is because uh, people are really looking for solutions, mm-hmm. 
and they are looking for accountability. And one of the pieces in my book is about getting naked. And, and that is about really taking responsibility for where you are. Take everybody else off the table who should have, would have, could have did something and you'd have been better. It is now your responsibility to get naked and say, now, what are you going to do? Because if you're waiting on them to have the right apology, that's not going to happen. There's in deep down inside, you feel like it should have never happened in the first place. You'll find some reason to stay stuck in the muck and the mud of that. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move past that and you be responsible for what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's huge for me where I am right now. Um, and I don't know if I even answered your question, but I love women. I love us. I love men too, but you know, they got each other and they handling it. I've never been a man. You know, I do work with young men um, and we have a great time and we do have great outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, but with a woman, mm -mm -mm. women, I love us. So, you know, I, I, I want us to be phenomenal because when we're right, Mm -hmm. There are so many things that just go right. Exactly. So um, that's who I'm here in the boxing corner for. And I think it's important to say that when we're focusing on empowering one another as women, that does not mean that we um, are looking down on our men mm -mm. or anything of that nature at all because mm -hmm. I, I've heard so many so many mm, that's a, a, a sticky <laughs> subject for me because it's just very interesting that whenever I talk about the empowerment of women a man decides that they want to chime in and say well it sounds like you're downing uh, you're putting the black man down or you're putting mm -hmm. no sir Right. But I'm focusing on with myself and my sisters has absolutely nothing to do with you. Absolutely. It's the same thing as Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter. Exactly. exactly. There's stuff to do and there are things that are happening that this particular group understands. If you want to support it, mm -hmm. phenomenal. If you, you know, but it's best that you probably just kind of step back because what's going to come out is going to benefit you anyway, because that's how we are. That's who we are. So we're better. We just, everything is better. Right. So, and, and you would think that they, that they would recognize that, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like they say, um, <laughs> what is it? A happy wife is a happy life. Mm -hmm. so if, if the woman is right and has gotten herself together, absolutely, then everything else will begin to fall in line. Absolutely. So I, I would, um, I'm glad to know that you do some professional development for, for groups because you're right. Mm -hmm. When women are able to connect with one another and recognize that they're not alone in some of, you know, their experiences and they can build relationships and connect with other women, that's very um, yeah. fruitful um, mm -hmm. for, for them as well. Um, do you have any plans on writing any other books, publishing? I have thought about that. I did think about that. Um, and I've been writing some notes in my phone. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, I've learned so much from the process. And of course, each time you learn what probably what you would do different and so forth and so on. So there's a few things that I would want to set myself up with before I go and jump into the pond again. Mm -hmm. um, but I have so much to like peel off from just the little um, nine lessons that I shared in the book that I'm just gonna ride this one mm -hmm. for a second um, and then work on my baby with the uh, coaching academy. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I just, I do, I do. I, I have a lot to say. <laughs> I've learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many uh, people that you and I and all of the other phenomenal women that we know mm -hmm. um, can help to either avoid pitfalls or understand that you are not alone or to celebrate yes. each other. Um, you know, it's kind of like I've, I've never seen another woman in this competition. When you look on the shelves and you see five million loaves of bread and five million types of toothpaste, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It, <laughs> it's not that serious. Somebody's going to pick somebody. It doesn't matter. And when they pick them, you know, that, that is 
you know, and the world needs everybody, a little bit of something from everybody. So um, to answer your question eventually, but it is a daunting task. And it's, for me, it's very intentional. I, I'm not one of those, I'm able to spit out like a book yeah. every three months. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not, cause you know, I'm so multi-passionate, I'm on something else, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it will eventually. Okay. Well, definitely we'll be on the lookout. I'm gonna, once we wrap up, connect with you, obviously about getting my autographed copy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, do you have any closing remarks or words of wisdom that you, oh, I know there's something mm -hmm. that I wanted to ask you. Yes. So Nicole. I'm listening. Oh, and that's the other thing. So this, <laughs> oh my God. I'm having a Manir Muhammad moment Hello. <laughs> because I don't know if he ever shared with you. Um, so real quick, funny story. A few weeks ago, my brother Jamil shared this newspaper article from the Muhammad Speaks back in 19, it had to be 1977 because my mom was pregnant with me, where they had changed their name and they had already selected my name, right? So the story in the family is my father just absolutely loved the name Nicole and had they not changed their name mm -hmm. my name would have been Nicole so okay. <laughs> it, it's, it's right there yes. yes but thinking back um with everything that you've experienced and everything that you've accomplished mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self mm. based upon all that you've gone through? Um, one of my brothers said this quote on his page and I love it, I have it posted up. Um, to quit playing and press the gas, mm -hmm. right? I love that quote um, because I think a part of it is you are sometimes, I don't, I don't want to say imposter syndrome, but you, you pause because you're uncertain of your strength, like whose you are and that there's more than enough room and that you can't offend anybody. And that there is no, um, that if you, you want to do something, just go ahead and do it. You know, um, when I was younger, I held back certain things because there's, you know, people tell you there's a certain way to live, a certain way to be, a certain way to act and so forth and so on. And sometimes people can take your Technicolor coat and paint it all one color for their benefit, yeah. right? I wasn't in a place where I felt like I could get my, I don't know, acetone removal or whatever <laughs> off my coat and just show up in my multifacetedness mm -hmm. and be okay with that because it works for me mm -hmm. right so if you come that with the parable of talents I love that um don't you get in trouble with God trying to please other people about what he's giving you he gives some people one some people five some people ten I don't know what all those numbers are I might be wrong on the numbers but you know what I'm saying right, <laughs> right? But if he gave you 10, you do your 10 mm -hmm. to the 15th millionth degree. Mm -hmm. Let that person with the one, and if they're trying to explain to you that you should be doing one, but you know you got 10, mm -hmm. you know, just tell them, say, I'll meet you on the other side. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I'm showing up with 20. Right. Because right? he doubles it. That's right. Um, when you come with who you are and you're not trying to shape it or mold it in a way that makes other people feel uncomfortable. Just come with your big old self and take up all your space. That's what I would tell her. Ooh, love yeah. it. I think that's a perfect way to end this episode of Light It Up. I am so grateful that you took time out of your- Ooh, I'm so happy. <laughs> to join me. You, I mean, you, you dropped some gems and I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you, you shared. I'm glad we had this opportunity to talk. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, leave a review. You can leave a review for this episode of the podcast. Um, make sure you like, follow, and subscribe the pod, to the podcast and share it with others. I'm quite sure that they will get some major gems dropped each and every week. So until next time, don't forget to continue to light it up and shine bright like a diamond.
Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.